everyone. Thank you for joining us on our YouTube channel at Flippin' Hippos. I'm Star the Flippin' Hippo. Today is Tuesday, November 5th, and we're going to be doing a very special what sold on eBay. We're going to take a look at all of the plush that sold on the platform in the month of October. Our sales were down in October, nowhere near what they should be normally, let alone what they should be in Q4. There's a lot of theories on why or how that happened. There were a lot of glitches. The platform underwent some changes. We, of course, were gone for a full week in Florida on vacation with 10 day handling on our store. We weren't as active as we should be. Um, probably a combination of all of the above. Just to kind of give you an idea, I did count up the total amount of plush. 18 total stuffed animals sold in October versus 32 in September. So that is half or almost half of what we sold in September. That's not even one plush a day. 18 per day in a month with 31 days comes out to like 4.2 stuffed animals a week. Um, hopefully from here things move up and get better. Not just for the plush category alone by itself, but for sales all around. Um, use the comment section below to let me know how your sales are doing. I'm still seeing that a lot of people are reporting a lot of glitches and slow sales, and I'm seeing that some people are starting to recover. So I like to hear from you guys, how is it going for you? Um, but as far as the month of October, we sold 18 stuffed animals. So I got all 18 of them pulled up here. We'll go over them real quick. What I'll do this month, I'll do something a little bit different. I will tell you where I got each one and how much it cost, what it sold for, how it shipped, so you can kind of get an idea of how many go first class, how many go priority. And I'm gonna let you know if it's a bolo or a bread and butter. Uh, for folks who don't like to do a lot of work for profit, volume-based business is not for you. If you don't want to be doing a volume-based business, you shouldn't be getting bread and butter items in any categories. You should be going for the bolos only. That said, I disagree with that type of business model just because the bolos, the more expensive items, in many instances are going to be very much harder for folks to find. There are a lucky few resellers who have a connection or a way of getting really great inventory via places online or connections they've made. And some people live in areas where they can just find really, really great inventory all the time. And if you're one of those folks, you might want to just focus on the higher end brands, the luxury brands, the bolos, the higher selling items. However, if you're like the majority of us, you live in an area where you can find great items via sourcing in the wild, going online and looking up wholesale. There's lots of different ways, but most of us, though we can find that, it's few and far in between and very rare. In our instance, specifically where we live, where we only to focus on bolo items and those home runs, we would be listing maybe two to three items a week and you can't make a living off of that. You cannot build a business off of that. So we have built a volume based business, tossing in the extremely good items when we find them and building the rest on bread and butter. I also think there's a common misconception between bread and butter and poop or just wasting your time on stuff that isn't worth it. Smalls add up and smalls are worth it. Bread and butter is worth it if you're willing to put in the work and you can find enough bread and butter to do a volume based business in your area. There is a huge difference between finding, let's say, American Eagle jeans for 99 cents or a couple bucks and flipping them for 20 to 25 every week, 10, 15 at a time. There's a huge difference between that and spending that same money on Walmart brand jeans they are going to flip for 10 and making nothing. So I just wanted to kind of point that out before we get into the stuffed animals here that sold. Um, there's a huge difference between a volume based business on bread and butter and selling poop. There are items out there that are definitely poop that I call no woes that you shouldn't be sourcing, but there's plenty of them if you can find them for a low enough cost of goods and you can find them in great quantity and you're willing to put in the work listing 10 to 20 a day, you can definitely build yourself a viable volume based business and make enough money to make this your living. And then when you find those home run items, those really awesome bolos, you can throw those in as a bonus and some extra money. 
And again, if you are one of the fortunate few who lives in an area where you can find bolo and luxury and designer items in the amount of volume that we find bread and butter, kudos to you, but I feel like most people don't have that opportunity. Okay, let's step off the soapbox and get into the plush. So you're looking at a Build-A-Bear World Wildlife Fund Panda. He's 12 inches. So this panda bear was, I believe I paid $1.99 for him at the Goodwill. He may have been a little less, like maybe 99 cents. I don't quite remember, but I want to say he was $1.99. This is a plush I would pick up for 50 cents, dollar, dollar ninety-nine. Build-A-Bear in and of itself is a bolo. The World Wildlife Federation is a bolo. As with most things, you know, depending on the Build-A-Bear you find is what it's going to sell for. A plain brown dog may go for $18. My Little Pony, $25. Um, so just keep that in mind. But Build-A-Bear is a bolo. World Wildlife Fund is a bolo. Animals that are harder to find and less uh, popular are a bolo. Panda bears are kind of in between on that. They're not like a armadillo, but they're not as common as a teddy bear. This guy sold for $21 plus shipping. So that's a definite bolo. Uh, two bucks into 21 less fees and shipping. That's like, or I'm sorry, less fees, $17 profit because they paid the shipping. So keep your eye out for these World Wildlife Fund animals, especially if they're a dual bolo like this where they have two brands on them. That's pretty cool. So he did sell for $21 plus shipping. He shipped in a priority large mailing box. You may have seen me talking about large mailing boxes in the past for animals that weigh over a pound. That box is like 12 by 12 by nine or eight. So it's kind of like right under where the dimensions will start to get into astronomical prices for shipping. And that's how I judge plush. If they can fit in there, I know they're just gonna go on priority rates. If they don't, you're gonna have to do the whole dimensional thing, which starts getting expensive. So now you're looking at a Scooby-Doo, seven inch plush. I would definitely tell you guys that Scooby-Doo is a bolo. A plus is not so much a bolo. It's not bad either. It's a bread and butter, unless you find the vintage. Vintage applause. I've talked about this on the channel before. Their tags are a little bit different. Um, those are a bolo. Scooby-Doo, of course, is going to be worth more if he's Cartoon Network or Hanna-Barbera on his tag versus Applause or something like this. But he's definitely a bolo, especially when you find him for real cheap at yard sales, church sales. If you can find him in a bag of plush that you got for a couple bucks. This particular one cost us 50 cents. I took a best offer of 10 on him. He shipped first class in a poly bag. You guys know that in general, in general, Disney and Winnie the Pooh are both bolos. The Disney store and the Disney parks are the higher end of the Disney plush. You want to look for the Disney store, snore, the Disney snore. The Disney store and Disney parks, they're worth more than Hasbro, Mattel, the Just Play. I think all Disney is a bolo. I just take into account how much I'm paying for it, what I think I can get for it. But I would say that I pick up pretty much every single Disney plush I've ever found. Even the Just Plays that are real small, they're 50 cents. This poo came from a yard sale in a lot of a huge lot of uh, Winnie the Pooh and Tigger and all these other animals. So he was around 77 cents. He sold for $19 and he shipped first class in a poly bag. Smurfs, Bolo, definitely. Um, they don't always go for high, high money, but they go pretty fast. Their popularity, um, believe it or not, isn't really waning. Most Smurfs I can't keep in the store for very long. They sell pretty quickly. This one was an officially licensed, the Smurfs on a sush tag. You can see him. So, but by his price point, this Smurf is more of a bread and butter. So while Smurfs in general are bolo, just keep in mind your cost of goods um, if it's a smaller one like this, you know it's going to go for 12 to 15 depending on the Smurf. And you don't want to pay a lot of money into it. So this one was 50 cents. He sold for $12 and shipped first class in a poly bag. This was a mistake, <laughs> but not a purposeful mistake. 
So you guys know that certain thrift stores sell those giant bags of plush for a couple of bucks and you get so many in there and they come out real cheap per animal. Um, this wasn't a bag. This is really old too. So this took forever to sell. But it wasn't a bag from a thrift store that we don't go to anymore. Um, we used to frequent it. It's a pretty long drive. It's next to a pawn store where we used to get a deal on video games. Um, but they stopped giving us the deal on video games a couple years ago when they saw how much they could sell them on eBay for. Um, so we just don't really go to that thrift store anymore. It was worth it to poke our noses in if we were already there, but not worth the drive when we know we can get 99 cents and stuff closer to home. Anyway, I digress. This bear came in a bag. In when we buy bags like that, they're usually clear bags and you guys can see in there. So if it's a big bag and it's a couple bucks and you can see some Disney or some Nickelodeon or some Build-A-Bear or some Pokemon or My Little Ponies, things you know are worth it, and then you see a couple of poopy nobodies, go ahead and buy the bag. The good animals out of the bag are going to make you your money back and the poopy nobodies can be listed as just extra profit. So, no offense to this teddy bear. I'm hurting her feelings if she's watching. <laughs> if she's watching from her new forever home. She's poop. And see, that's the thing with Hallmark. Hallmark is hit or miss. There are Hallmark plush that are worth a lot of money and some that aren't. So, Hallmark's a brand I tell people to just kind of be careful with. Either know what you're getting or comp it before you pick it up. Um, so, she sold for $8.44. Shipped first class. Anything we made on her was pure profit, though, as all of the really great animals out of that bag have long ago and far away sold and um, paid for the bag. You guys might remember this Nemo from a What Sold on eBay video. He is damaged. His poor little wing looks chewed on. Uh, but he is a Disney store, so I picked him up because he was only 50 cents, and he is an official Disney store, and Nemo's pretty popular. Um, so I did chance it for 50 cents and even with his damage and him being kind of small at eight inches, he sold for nine dollars. I accepted a best offer of nine on him. I was happy to do that with his damage and he shipped first class in a poly. Here's a lovey, not technically a plush, but I always show my loveys when I show my plush. I consider them plush. Um, they're little plush animals stuck inside of a blanket if you're not familiar with what a lovey is. They're little plush heads and bodies that come out of a baby blanket. They're usually very, very soft, and they're worth a lot of money. This particular owl only sold for $20. And I said only sold for because loveys can go up to $60, $80, sometimes $100 if you can find them new with tags, the larger ones. So you guys, loveys are a bolo. Pick them up if you find them. This one was $0.50 cents at Goodwill. Took a best offer of 20 shipped first class in a poly bag, and uh, it's a great way to go. So if you find loveys, grab them. They're a bolo. Use keywords in your title like lovey and security blanket, baby soother, whatever you have room for. This is a sloth. Clearly, he's a sloth. He's from The Crudes by DreamWorks. He was 50 cents, and he sold for $14. This is one of the examples of a more obscure character from a more obscure movie. So he's not necessarily a bolo, but he kind of is because anything that's an obscure animal, an obscure villain, an obscure character from an obscure movie, that's a lot of the word obscure, but anything that's going to be harder to find, somebody out there really loves that character or that villain or that animal, and they're going to be willing to pay up for it because they're not as easily, they're not as easily found. So... He shipped first class in a poly bag. He was really tiny. This duckacorn is Nanco. This is a claw machine plush. Not something that um, is a bolo. But I think that these animals that are part unicorn, part another animal are a bolo. I had a panda corn that went for like $18 if I remember correctly. Way up towards $20. This particular one I accepted a best offer of $10.50 on. But he sold overnight. So 50 cents was our cost of goods. Listed him. Had a best offer of 10.50 by morning. And I knew 12 was high to list him at. And he sold overnight. So I do recommend if you find these unicorns that are another animal hybrid, definitely grab them. Those are bolos. South Carolina bear was 99 cents, I want to say. 
Um, I probably said something different in another video. Sometimes I forget. I do remember this guy. He's like two to three years old. He came from our honeypot thrift down the street. That's long been closed. We'll say we paid 99 cents for him. He took forever to sell. I would never buy this thing again, this brand or these types of bears. He did sell for $9. No, he sold for $8. Sorry, I had to check my notes. $8 best offer, ship first class in a poly bag. You guys, anything with Hershey's or Reese's, definitely a bolo. Obviously, if it's from the Hershey Park in Pennsylvania or the Petting Zoo, if you're not familiar, the Petting Zoo is part of Hershey Park. If it's from Hershey Park or the Petting Zoo, it's going to be worth more money. If it's official Hershey's, Reese's, it'll be worth more money. Galleries, again, one of those claw machine brands. But it had Reese's on them. He was 50 cents. And he sold for $18. And he shipped first class in a poly bag. Minnie Mouse here came from a yard sale last summer. I want to say she was 50 cents or a dollar. She talks and sings and she does cute stuff. Minnie Mouse, Disney. Bolo, uh, any Disney characters with costumes like this, I usually say are a Bolo because they're more unique. This wasn't that great of a brand, though. This is an official Disney or Disney store or anything. Uh, but I picked her up because she was Minnie and she was a witch. She took a while to sell, and I accepted a best offer of 12 She shipped first class in a poly bag. These guys, most folks will tell you are no lows. The Taco Bell dogs are no lows. I still pick them up. Some of you may recall I sold the set of 10 of these dogs that I paid. To, I, what did I pay? 10 or 20 for the whole set? Sold them for like 50. Um, I have high hopes when it comes to certain plush and I get them anyway. I wouldn't get them uh, for what I paid for that set. Of, it was I think it was five of them and I paid 10 and I flipped them for 50. Um, because the whole set was there and they were all in working order, maybe pay, you know, $2 a piece if you can get a whole set like that because my whole set went for 50 But if you're finding them singly, I really wouldn't get them unless they're like a quarter, a yard sale, or, you know, in a bag of plush. I accepted a best offer of 8 on this one. Shipped first class in a poly bag. This is a Beanie Baby. Beanie Babies are a no-low. With very, very few exceptions. The dragons are one of the exceptions. They're not going to be bolos or home runs, but they will fetch you a good bread and butter price. Dragons do well, generally speaking, any brand, any dragon. Uh, some will go for 10 or 12 bucks, and some will go for upwards of 40 and 50, depending. So just make sure you're checking your comps when you're outsourcing. Or you know already ahead of time, I've sold this dragon before, I know what he can do. This one sold for $12, was 50 cents at Goodwill, shipped first class in a poly bag. Here we have a Donatello turtle head. Y'all, Ninja Turtles are a bolo, especially if they're Nickelodeon official. Always a bolo. Uh, the ones like this are going to be more of a bread and butter. They're going to go for a less price. I've sold the larger dolls for $20, $25, even internationally where they're paying astronomical shipping. The little ones like this and the little beanie balls you find, those are only if you want to do volume. This guy was $0.50, cents, sold for 9 shipped first class, and a poly. I picked this up because it's different, it's unique, it has Japanese writing on its tag. I always recommend anything that's video game, anime, anything Japanese, pick them up, you never know. This guy was 50 cents at Goodwill, and I accepted a best offer of 12 on him. He shipped first class in a small box, just to protect all of his tags and that. Speaking of anime, here's an anime character. We picked up for 50 cents at the Goodwill. He's a soul eater. Uh, he sold for $23.44. So I always recommend, if you see anime characters or anything Japanese, snatch it up. Um... You don't have to know who the character is or what video game it's from. You can always look it up. Um, but they're definitely worth it. This guy had his tags and everything. So 50 cents into 23.44. Shift first class in a poly. These peeps, I keep picking them up. They're not worth it. I like them. They're cute. I get them for 50 cents. They move pretty quickly. So I guess if you want volume and you want to move quickly and you can find them for low cost of goods... I've found the pink bunnies and the yellow ducks. I've just found different kinds of peeps. 
This one I accepted a best offer of eight fifty. He took a couple weeks to sell. He only cost fifty cents. He shipped first class in a poly. Tweety Bird. I believe this one came from the Goodwill for fifty cents. I had a couple of blue Tweeties. One had a heart all over print. But I believe this is the Tweety I picked up from Goodwill for fifty cents. Looney Tunes, Bolo, especially if it's from the Warner Brothers store. Kind of the same rules as Disney. If it's official, it's going to get more money. Um, this tiny little Tweety Bird was actually disappointing when I got him home and comped him. I need a drink real quick. Sorry, guys. And sometimes they are, but he was only 50 cents. And he sold for $8.99. Took a best offer on him. Shipped first class in a poly. Bullwinkle is a bolo. This particular Bullwinkle was kind of a disappointment when I got him home. Um, you can see he is one of my favorite brands. He's Classic Toy Company. I thought he had two things going for him, Classic Toy and Bullwinkle. It was okay though. He only cost 50 cents. He sold for 11 on a best offer. Shipped first class in a poly bag. I would still pick up any and all Bullwinkle Rocky. I had a Natasha once, the evil villain's girlfriend. I'd still pick those up and recommend other people do. Tigger, obviously Winnie the Pooh and Disney. Let's see what his brand. He's official Disney, not Disney Parks or Disney Store, but he's got the official Disney tag. He was 50 cents at Goodwill. I accepted a best offer of $9.50 and he shipped first class in a poly bag. So as you can see, with the Disney plush, especially the oversaturated characters like Tigger and Pooh, and the smaller ones, those are going to be more of your bread and butter. They're going to go for less money. These uh, Chick-fil-A cows, I call them bread and butter. But they're still bolos. If, if you want a volume-based business, they're a bolo for you. You should definitely be picking them up if your cost of goods is low enough. If you want a big return on your plush, they're not for you. Unless you find the big ones. We had a big one once that went for like 20 maybe. Uh, this little one was $0.50 cents at Goodwill. Accepted a best offer of $10.50, and he shipped first class in a poly. Cabbage Patch Kid Pets. Guys, they are a bolo. Absolutely tootly. Especially when you find them new in the box like this. I paid... I want to tell you I paid $1.99. I think I went over this in the What Sold video a couple weeks ago that I couldn't remember what I paid for. it. I don't even remember where I got it. Goodwill, maybe? Church sale? I have two of them, both new in the box, still got one listed. Um, we'll say I paid $1.99, it sold for a $20 best offer, plus they paid shipping. So keep your eye out for the Cabbage Patch Kid pets. I've had the Cabbage Patch Kid horses used, they do well. Uh, this shipped in a large mailing box. Teeny tiny little Woodstock in a witch costume. I believe he was Goodwill 50 cents. He's got the official Peanuts tag. Super cute. And he sold for $9. Shipped first class in a poly. Uh, Peanuts is another bolo, especially if it's official. Um, instead of like Hasbro or Mattel or anything like that. And these can be hit or miss too, just like the Winnie the Pooh and some of the Disney and some of the Looney Tunes. If it's a smaller plush, if it's an oversaturated character, it's more for you if you want to do volume. Um, but he was 50 cents, sold for nine, shipped in a poly bag first class. Y'all, sock monkeys, period. Dandy, collector's choice, period. Sock monkeys are a bolo. Dandy's collector's choice is a bolo. If you can find a dandy collector's choice sock monkey, you are really got something going there. I do pick up any and all sock monkeys I find. I find that they do well, even the small ones that only sell for 10 or 12 bucks, they flip within a couple of days. It's amazing. They go so quickly. People love sock monkeys. This was a bigger one. He was a foot and a half long. 50 cents at Goodwill. He sold for $17 within a couple days of listing and he shipped first class in a poly. Here's an example of, a t of one I picked up because it was uh, more unique. Ice Age, Dawn of the Dinosaurs, an older movie, and uh, not, a, not a very common character from the films. So he was 50 cents and he sold for 17.25 on a best offer. 
So this was just like a gut feeling I had. I knew that this was not a common character. And again, with that word obscure. But yeah, I brought him home. Comped him. Pleasantly surprised. Accepted a best offer. $17.25. He did ship in a small box. A 5x5x5. Five by five by five, um, or 7x5x9 by five by maybe. I just seen that he's 13 inches. It was a very small box I got him into. I just wanted to protect his tags since they paid so much for him. Here's another lovey, guys. This one is a giraffe. Little blessings. New with tags. Is that little blessings or little beginnings? Let's see. I don't know how to read. No, there are little blessings loveys I've sold. So this one's the beginnings. Dollar at a yard sale. Plush and lovey. Right there on the tag. Sold for $36. And shipped first class on a poly. I uh, tucked the little tag in real tight against his body so that it wouldn't get damaged. Then we have a tummy stuffers. I just picked it up because it was unique looking. Purple unicorn. Um, again, you know, the hybrid unicorn animals are really good, but unicorns in general are pretty good. They're right up there with dragons. People just really like them. They're very popular. So I do try to pick up unicorns when I find them. This particular one was cool because it was a tummy stuffer. Picked it up for 50 cents. It sold for $16.88 within a few days of being listed. And it shipped first class in a poly. Here's Olaf. Frozen is a bolo, especially right now because Frozen 2 is coming out in the month of November, which is current. If you find your Disney Frozen toys, grab them now. Um... Of course, you know, ones like this, it's just play. It's going to go for less because it's just play Disney. Also, this one was broken. You can see here in the description I disclosed that. So I did want to share with you guys that even broken, non-talking ones can sell. I accepted a best offer of eight on him. Uh, because he's broken, I just shipped him in a poly bag. Vintage Sesame Street plush. Vintage Muppets. Bolo. There are some Kermit the Frogs out there that go for 40 and up. Uh, what did Alice sell for? Alice sold for 40. So the bolt, the uh, vintage Sesame Street and Muppets are a definite bolo, you guys. And I'm going to show you. Remember how earlier I was saying applause vintage tags look a little different? They often look like the tag was printed out long, folded in half, and then attached to the animal. You can see how the words wrap around right here where it was folded and attached so it's not like they printed one side and the other this was one tag and a lot of the vintage tags if you look right here it says baby Alice so vintage tags are gonna look like they're folded in half they often have the names most of the time have the year on them they just look a little bit different but this is an example of one you guys could look at so you can keep an eye out for your vintage plus Plush, not plus. Sorry, guys. So you can keep an eye out for your vintage plush. I found Alice in the 50-cent cart at the Goodwill. She was squished. She had scratches in her eyes. She wasn't as plump or as full as she used to be. And she still sold for $40. And she shipped first class. Here we have an NFL team pigskin. He was picked up just because he was unique and I really didn't know what it was. It was a pigskin bear. Had NFL on it. I had to look up the team, the number, and the player because you guys know we don't do the sports. And he sold for $15 best offer. Shipped first class. Pick this one up because it's unique. So I do keep an eye out for these larger, more unique plush like this. This one was Gund. Gund is an okay brand. Some of the Gund is a bolo. Some of it's bread and butter. This guy was also American Eagle Outfitters. I believe he was 99 cents. He was worth the risk for me to bring home. Got him home, found out he was supposed to have a snowboard back here in his backpack. So I disclosed that here. Uh, original came with a snowboard, which is not included in this sale. Had he had his snowboard, I probably would have started him off around 25 or 30 um, but in any case, even missing his snowboard, he went for 15. I accepted a best offer of 15 
And they paid his shipping because um, he weighed over a pound. So I had calculated shipping on him. And uh, he shipped in a large mailing box. And last but not least, we have a little Eeyore Angel Disney Store. Angel Eeyore. Sold for $13. He was $0.50 cents cost of goods to us. And he shipped in a little tiny box when he went. First class, small box. Uh, just to protect him because he had his nice tags. And the halo is bendable and I didn't want it to get destroyed in a poly mill or in uh, shipment. So you guys, uh, these Disney Store plush, you know, if you want to look them up, some are definite bolo home runs. Some are going to be bread and butter. Um, but you can definitely build up volume with plush. Even if you don't want a volume-based business for clothing or anything like that, you can definitely build a volume-based plush side of things. You can sell your faster flips, your home runs, and your designer brands, your electronics and stuff like that. Um, but as far as plush goes, they're very long tail to begin with. Super long tail. Generally speaking, most of them are. Um, so it doesn't hurt to have like a couple hundred listed. And then the more you have listed, the more will sell every day. And they're not hard to photograph. They're super easy to photograph. They're super easy to ship. The one downfall is they can take up a lot of room in storage. Uh, but if you have the room and you can find them at really cheap cost of goods prices around you, you know, doesn't hurt to have a volume based plush side of things uh, just because of how long tail they are. And uh, you can usually find them for really cheap out in the wild. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. I know you guys love these plush videos, so I was excited to do this for you. It is one of my favorite to do. Plush are still my favorite thing to source. Photograph, list, sell, ship, talk about, do videos about. I just love plush. That's why I'm the plushy queen. Uh, but let me know what you think in the comments down below, you guys. Uh, if you would, before you leave, hit the thumbs up. It seems like such a small thing, so easy to do, but it really helps the channel way more than I think you guys even realize. So please do hit that thumbs up. It helps us so, so much. If you haven't already and you'd like to, please subscribe to our channel and help us feed a hungry hippo. You can find us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. We're at Flippin' Hippos on all social media. Don't forget to join our Facebook group where we talk about plush all the time amongst other things and you can find us at the facebook group re flipping hippos reseller pod i always get our name wrong flipping hippos reseller pod on facebook link is in the description box down below until next time guys go be productive go get some stuff done we are in the middle of q4 so let's ramp it up and get some sales and uh try to work around all the glitches hopefully everybody's having a, a good time as far as sales go see you next time Y'all are the best. Thanks for watching. Bye.